So as you all know, Bernie Sanders just reintroduced his Medicare for All bill, and he actually included some much needed additions that were lacking from the 2017 version. And one of those inclusions was something that I was desperately hoping for, which is coverage for long-term care. So here's what the Huff Post's Daniel Moran's and Jonathan Cohn say about it. Quote, the latest version of Medicare for All includes coverage of home health aides, job counselors, and other supports that allow disabled and elderly people to live on their own outside of nursing homes or other institutions. The new bill is also winning praise from representatives of the disability rights community who worked closely with Sanders on crafting the provisions for home and community-based services, which today are typically available only for people whose low incomes qualify them for Medicare and even then only on a limited basis. Previous versions of the Sanders bill did not include this coverage. We are grateful to Senator Sanders for including home and community-based long-term services and supports as part of the Medicare for All bill, said Nicole Jorwick, Senior Director of Public Policy at the ARC. The All includes people on waiting lists for these services all over the country. Sanders envisions moving all people into the new government insurance program over the course of four years. That is a key difference between his bill and the latest version of House Medicare for All legislation, which Representative Pramila Jayapal introduced in February and which calls for a transition of just two years. But in most respects, the bills are similar and on a similar political trajectory. The new version of Jayapal's legislation includes enhancements, including better coverage of long-term care for the elderly and disabled. So the inclusion of long-term care was crucial, and I'm glad that he added that. I am a little bit disappointed, to be honest, that the transition period is four years and that he didn't bring his bill to parity with Pramila Jayapal's to make it two years, but this isn't going to be the last iteration. Hopefully, when it is reintroduced, when he's one day president, these bills will match, but one way or another, they're going to have to be reconciled to get passed and codified into law, but nonetheless, this is great. I'm glad that he reintroduced this because we need to know where the other Democratic Party senators are at. And as far as I know, it seems like it has the same number of co-sponsors, including some of Bernie Sanders' primary opponents. Kirsten Gillibrand, Kamala Harris, Elizabeth Warren, Cory Booker, the same people. And from my understanding, Kirsten Gillibrand actually wrote certain provisions with regard to the transition period. So, even if it's the case that they're simultaneously co-sponsoring other half measures and that doesn't necessarily communicate to me that they're serious about actually getting Medicare for all, nonetheless, their support is still important and them lending their support is only good for our cause. So with that being said, I'm glad, I'm happy that he reintroduced this and while we all should be celebrating, unfortunately, I feel a little bit disheartened, to be honest, because the way that the media is depicting this legislation it's overwhelmingly biased. So I want to give you an example of that. One of them came from an article that Politico published by Adam Cancrin, where he literally overtly suggested that Bernie Sanders reintroducing this now is actually divisive. He literally suggested that. Now, why would a bill that would actually save lives, thousands of lives of Americans every single year, be divisive? Well, it's because currently... Trump is attacking the Affordable Care Act, and Democrats of all stripes came together. They united behind this re renewed sense of urgency to defend the Affordable Care Act. So by Bernie Sanders saying, let's do Medicare for all, that's apparently divisive. He says, Senator Bernie Sanders tried to stake his position as the leading progressive in a crowded presidential field on Wednesday by rolling out a new Medicare for All plan. In the process, reopening divisions among Democrats after President Donald Trump united them with his renewed assault on Obamacare. Now, Mr. Cancrin also points out how the critics were supposedly shitting on this bill, saying that, you know, it's a pipe dream and that it would cost $30 trillion. And I just got to ask the question, are you serious, Adam Cancrin? Are you actually a serious journalist? Because what you're saying here, it's either showing one of two things. You're stupid or you're disingenuous. And I honestly don't know which one is worse. Because to say that Bernie is divisive for introducing a healthcare plan that 
the overwhelming majority of the Democratic Party's own base supports, to say that that's divisive, you're fucking delusional. You're downright delusional if you honestly think that that's the case. Because you're the one who's being divisive. The Democrats who don't support what their own base wants, they're the ones that are being divisive. And I love how he included that some critics are saying it's a pipe dream. Oh, are they really saying it's a pipe dream? Are they really? Hmm, I've never heard that before. I've never heard them call it pie in the sky. He also says here that critics are saying it could cost, you know, $30 trillion. And Bernie Sanders doesn't specifically say how we can pay for that. Well, let me ask you this, dipshit. How much does our current system cost? Whenever somebody says that Medicare for All costs $30 trillion, please respond by asking them how much they think our current system costs. It costs $60 trillion. So understand when they use that $30 trillion or $32 trillion figure, they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. That doesn't refer to the cost. That refers to the shift that we will make. Because, of course, if you move to Medicare for All, you increase federal spending, but at the same time, you decrease state, local, and individual spending. So to say that Bernie Sanders' Medicare for All plan has a price tag of $30 trillion, you're demonstrating that you don't know what the fuck you're talking about, and you're a journalist. Do your motherfucking job for once. Do your fucking job. $30 trillion is not the cost of Medicare for All. Overall, it would cost about $57 trillion, and this is according to a conservative estimate by the Mercatus Center. So for everyone who's saying Medicare for All will cost $32 trillion, ask them how much our current system costs and watch their eyes glaze over because they're just regurgitating the same fucking thing they've heard a million times in mainstream media from other clueless assholes who don't know what the fuck they're talking about. But I'm not just picking on Adam Cancrin here, because there was another example from the New York Times where journalist Cheryl Gay Stolberg says, Medicare for all is not passing this Congress. Its cost is still unknown. The mechanisms to pay for it is still the subject of debate. But behind Mr. Sanders' choreographed theatrics were the unmistakable politics of 2020 and his campaign for president, a campaign that never really ended ended with the election of Donald J. Trump. So to her, this is nothing more than a choreographed stunt. It's theatrics. That's all this is. Let me ask you this, Cheryl. Do you have any clue what you're talking about? Any clue? If you are promoting a policy that will be a gigantic change to our healthcare system, do you not think it's important to maybe get a head start and start trying to build a coalition before you come to power so you will be ready to pass it. But instead you call it theatrics. But isn't what the Democratic Party doing now theatrics when they're trying to get everyone to forget about Medicare for all and defend the ACA when their bill to defend the ACA will not come up for a vote in the Senate? Mitch McConnell will block it. So that's not theatrics. But what Bernie Sanders is doing is theatrics according to this hack get the fuck out of here i am so sick of these hacks in mainstream media pretending as if they're intelligent and trying to pass off their smug dismissal as astute political analysis it's not astute you're a fucking moron cheryl you're a dipshit what you're doing is you are lying and gaslighting people because you don't support medicare for all so i'm sure that to you you have health insurance you're perfectly comfortable but what you're honestly saying and what you should be honest about what all journalists who are against medicare for all should be honest about is the fact that they don't care about objective journalism they are in favor of keeping the status quo where thousands of Americans die every fucking year. So you're pro-death. You want to maintain the pro-death status quo where people die all because you think that it's more important for health insurance companies to make profits off of these people. What a sick, sadistic fucking system that is indefensible that these dipshits in mainstream media are defending because they're comfortable. So fuck you, I got mine. It's disgusting and it makes me irate to read about these fucking morons. These fucking 
idiots, these douchebags who think that they're being smart and witty when all they're doing is being useful idiots for the fucking establishment, for the machine, for the for-profit health insurance companies who are profiting off of people dying in this country. But they're fucking okay with that because they make a lot of money being shills and being useful idiots for the status quo. And it's fucking morally reprehensible. And I'm so sick of it. I'm so sick of these supposedly intellectual people judging us peasants for demanding that we don't die if we get sick as they judge us from their ivory tower and deem what Bernie's doing choreographed theatrics. Go fuck yourself. Go fuck yourself. Absolutely insane. Now, Bernie Sanders, he, he responded to this claim that he's being attacked for that, you know, why are you reintroducing Medicare for all when we should be focusing on Obamacare? And I don't think he could be more clear. It's because it's not going to fucking pass. So here's what he had to say. You did an interview with Chris Hayes recently, and he asked you about the Democratic House bill to shore up the Affordable Care Act. And you said that you're not a fan of that because you support Medicare for all and single payer. So if it came up in the Senate, would you not vote against it? It's not going to come up in the Senate. See, that's the point. You, here, here is the issue. I think ultimately, as a nation, we have got to conclude what I believe is true is that the current health care system is dysfunctional in the sense that we are spending twice as much per capita on health care as do the people of any other nation. And you've got 30 million people uninsured, uh, more than that, underinsured. We pay the highest prices in the world for prescription drugs and our health care outcomes in terms of life expectancy or how we treat many diseases is not as good as many other countries. The function of this health care system is to make huge profits for the insurance companies and the drug companies. That's got to end. Mm -hmm. And we need a health care system based on guaranteeing health care to all as a right in a cost-effective way. That's Medicare for all. So to answer your question, that legislation, if good legislation is passed in the House, it ain't going to come to the Senate. Mitch McConnell's not going to take it up. So my job right now is to keep this country focused on the real solution which is that you have Medicare right now, works well for seniors, we need to improve it for seniors, we need to expand it for everybody. So do you think that Democrats shouldn't, in Congress, shouldn't be spending time strengthening the Obamacare because the system's just too dysfunctional? I think the focus really has got to be, and I think most Democrats uh, believe that, and, and many Republicans as well. It is not complicated. Is health care a human right for all Americans? I think yes. How do you provide health care to all people in a cost-effective way? Right now, this system is so wasteful. We waste hundreds and hundreds of billions of dollars uh, in administration, in profiteering for the drug companies uh, and the insurance companies, outrageous compensation packages. That's not what health care is about. It should be quality care for all people in a cost-effective way. That's Medicare for all. And are you willing to finance Medicare for all through deficit spending, or do you think it needs to pay for itself entirely? No, we'll, we'll, we'll take a look at that, but it will, it will be financed through progressive taxation. Now, one of the things certainly that will happen is you're going to turn on your TV soon, you see these 30-second ads, Bernie Sanders wants to raise all your taxes and all this stuff. What they will forget to tell you is that you and your employer will no longer be paying any health insurance premium. You're not going to have any deductible, you're not going to have any copayment, and you're going to have access to more benefits, more services, more care than you have right now. Under our plan, the average American will be paying significantly less for health care than he or she is paying right now. There you have it. I don't think he could be more clear. He shouldn't have to be the one to regurgitate the same thing about Medicare for all over and over and over and over and over again, but because our mainstream media is fucking garbage because it is dog shit. It's fucking useless and it misinforms people willfully. He has to do their job for them. They're not actually challenging the status quo, the health insurance industry, who he's going to war with, who advertises on these networks. So he's got to do their job for them and he can't possibly be more clear. Why would we shift our focus on a policy that wasn't good to begin with that is already sinking. It's a sinking ship. So why don't we move on and when we take power, rather than trying to bring back this zombie that's already dead, let's move towards the permanent solution that will save lives. But they don't want to do that. They don't want to do that. So he has to repeat over and over again facts about Medicare for all because the media is too dishonest to educate people about it. 
Yeah. This is why America is in such a fucked state because of the media. Because of the media. It's disgusting. It's morally reprehensible. And I don't know how these people, how these liars sleep at night. I really don't.